I started the business in the satellite industry many years ago. So I'm an entrepreneur. And uh, one thing I know about satellites is that when they are up there, as folks in photonics know, uh, here in Rochester, you can see everything. And it doesn't lie. Uh, so my first image is taken from a satellite photograph. Now, some of you will recognize that place. Um, I mean, does anybody think that's Florida, by the way? <laughs> I've actually been to colleges in the United States where they said that's Florida. <laughs> The Korean but um, that's a nighttime uh, actual uh, satellite image um, of the Korean Peninsula at night. They call that a flyby. And what do you, I mean, obviously, what do you notice? Right. In South Korea, you notice that it's that's lit up. It's it's thriving. It's building on its culture, its heritage, its people. It's invested in the concept of the intelligent community. We have three intelligent communities there, and they've been working on this for years. They are the eighth largest economy in the world. In 1974, they were the eighth poorest place on Earth. So that transformation happened very, very quickly. Of course, if you look north of the 38th parallel, uh, you see what? Nothing, no, darkness. Uh, actually, you see a little light there. People always ask me, what's that little dot of light? And I always say it's the New York Yankees charter plane looking for the World Series. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not because they miss it. I think the Citizen Canadian is looking for the Stanley Cup, but I don't really got to do it. There's a lot of Canadian friends here. But this, for me, this is a terrific image for John and I to think about this image a lot because this is what's happening in our cities. Right? If you think of the image in light and dark, and of course, as the mayor said, you know, telecommunications, the internet, fiber optics, they call it lighting up the city. Right? Those of you who are in telecom know this. Cities are making a choice. They are choosing to go down the path to become intelligent cities and move toward light, while others decide that the past was good enough and that the way into the 21st century is maybe by way of the 12th century. And what happens is they get plunged into darkness. And so we think the stakes are very, very high in the world today. So the fact that Rochester and Taoyen and Eindhoven and many of the cities that you'll hear from today have chosen to go toward the light is paying off in dividends. Dividends economically, socially, and for its people. And that is at the heart of what the intelligent community tries to preach as we go around the world. Um, we have a very simple proposition, and uh, it's the one that Dorothy used in the Wizard of Oz, and it's, it's real simple. Uh, there is no place like home. Uh, we believe that a person will fight for their country for a while. Uh, they will fight for things that are somewhat abstract for a while. But at the end of the day, you will do anything for the place where your children are raised, the place you call home. And so when we started the intelligent community movement, we said that if we can activate people's homes, their neighborhoods, their communities, we believe we'll have a better chance of rebuilding uh, both the local economies of the world and the national economy. And what we've done through the 200 cities that we work with now, like Rochester, is really change the dialogue about which cities uh, are going to thrive and what role they are going to play in the national debate about the future. We see a lot of dysfunction at national levels today. I'm not going to name names, but things are happening in the world that make national governments largely dysfunctional. But where the innovation is coming from are places like Rochester. Are places like on Eindhoven, Taoyen, <coughs> and Suwon, South Korea. That's where the innovation is coming. So home is being transformed into a place of light, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Now, um, you know, as as you all know, this is part of the first stage of our beauty contest or our uh, our Academy Awards, and uh, we always uh, start off with naming 21 from about 400 or so communities that are that are under study. Um, and so we're at the very first phase of this today. Uh, we will then move uh, from the 21 that are named tonight. Uh, we'll head over to Asia, we'll over to Taiwan in February. And from there, we'll name seven. Right? So it actually is like the Stanley Cup. We're going to the playoffs. And from there, um, those seven will be invited to our summit in New York. Uh, actually, the summit is going to be in Dublin, Ohio this year at our institute. And they will be the centerpiece of a conference 
uh, about the intelligent community that happens for three days. We pick your brains. The world again gathers. And then on um, that evening, as we will do tonight, we will pick one. And um, we name the intelligent community here. Last year it was Tao Yen uh, that was named here uh, down in New York City. Uh, Tao Yen, by the way, for those of you who are thinking about getting on the, this path to making your community an intelligent community, they worked on this program for 11 years before Mayor Chen and his team were realized as the intelligent community here. But every year, they improved. Every year they entered the program, year after year after year, and now they are you know, the dominant city in a, in a nation that has plenty of them. So their gross domestic local products continue to grow. So that's what it looks like here are some previous intelligent communities of the year. And as you can tell, they come from all over the world. So why are we here? How did they get here? Well, uh, very simple. Um, we have uh, a method we're getting it done, a six-step method, and not just get followed. But here's some things to consider if you or your community are, are going to go down this path. 80% of growth in the modern economy comes from the introduction of new technology. So obviously, technology plays a significant role. Small businesses whose employers innovate see profit margins grow eight and a half times higher than those who do not. So it's not just the technology, it's also the innovation. And that's why RIT in places like that are so critical. Location matters less than ever before. My dream is to go back to Lyons someday and to see it thriving as one of the world's great intelligent villages. Location does matter a lot less than before. We are connected. For the first time in human history, two conditions exist that never existed before in our species. We've asked everyone. We've asked anthropologists. We've asked scientists. We asked the ultimate authority, my mother. <laughs> Why is they know everything? She said it's true, two conditions exist. First one is a human being can live anywhere he or she wants today. Second one is they can be connected to a global economy, a global base of knowledge. Everybody has access to this. It does not discriminate. But what is needed? What is needed? We know this a lot in central New York. You need a new railroad. You need the connectivity. You need the access. And that access, of course, comes from a smart infrastructure, or broadband or satellite, and it comes from the rest of the pieces of the infrastructure, the education systems and the community. So location matters less than ever before. What matters is human intelligence. As the Vice President, as Nobel Laureate Al Gore said, um, human intelligence is an endless natural resource. It doesn't prove the end. It doesn't make the water dirty. Um, it doesn't make phones go off. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. But the beauty of human intelligence is that it can be excavated like oil, like coal, like other commodities, and lift human beings and allow them to realize their destiny. Because unlike the other commodities that we excavated for economic gain, human intelligence has a soul. And as we recover our soul, as we recover our communities too, allow people to achieve their own destinies, we will see growth, we will see prosperity, and we will see peace because we've unlocked that thing that is most precious to us. So that's why we call ourselves the intelligent community. Um, my father always used to say, you know, you'll know, only be successful in life if you hang around with people who are smarter than you. You can't learn anything from dumb ones. Um, my, my mother actually used to say, well, good, I have a lot of friends. But it's, but, it's, right? Tiny um, but the um, it is true, and so we want to make cities full of intelligence. The other reason we're here, and this is a really important one for me, to learn about Rochester and how it sees its destiny. You know, when we go out in the world, we, we tell people about our Smart 21 and our places. They always have a bias of the way you were five or ten years ago. You can tell people about any city in the world, and generally speaking. They'll have an image created by the media or someone that, that is like in the past. They don't have the current snapshot. So if nothing else today, what I'm most excited about in terms of this is that Rochester will get a chance to tell its story, share its narrative. And we started last night at RIT, and I think you're gonna, you'll be blown away by what you hear and what you see tomorrow. And of course, as I said, the mayor has gotten us all through this stuff. Okay, so how is it done? 
Uh, we had a former senator here many years ago, Senator uh, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, uh, a great hero of mine, a great writer. Uh, they asked him one time somewhat, facetiously, how do you build a great city? And he paused and he said, well, first you build a great university, and then you wait about 200 years. Well, you know, obviously you can't wait 200 years to build a great city. So what we do with the ICF through our research, through studying hundreds and hundreds of communities, we have developed the ICF method. These six indicators or criteria are ones that are used by every one of the cities in our program to advance. And they have all proven to be successful because they have used these six criteria. And you will hear more about them uh, as we go through the day. And you can nominate your own city. Uh, so we hope that what we also come away with is that uh, Mr. Esposito places in uh, Wayne County and Monroe County and other parts of the Finger Lakes uh, consider getting on this path. Okay, remember the light. Um, smart is great. I, I like to say sometimes to Mark, uh, smart is the new dumb. Because smart is just the stuff. Or as Arthur Ware said, my friend Arthur Ware from Basney says, it's just things. Right? Pastor Arthur, you know that. Right? It's, it's the railroad, it's the tracks, it's the steel, it's the fiber, but it's not the thing. And we can't go worshiping a false god. Technology is not the thing. Technology is where you start. That's why our number one criteria is broadband, but the rest are all human conditions that we need to activate. So we say, we say if you want to move toward the light, it takes a smart city to become an intelligent community. And I am standing in the middle of a place that is moving toward the light, that has become an intelligent community, and uh, I'm just thrilled to be here. So thank you for having me here. Thank you all for, for showing up, my friends from, from all over the world, from the city, the city of New York. Um, I hope that uh, you get as excited as I am about Rochester as you hear this today, and I hope you learn that Dorothy really was right.